Okay, so CKT or complex carrier type is a phenomenon that we observe throughout um, a lot of different hematological malignancies, including in CLL, and it has been um, observed or understood as an adverse prognostic factor for patients who carry complex carrier type. Um, complex carrier type is defined as the presence of at least three chromosomal aberrations um, in patients with uh, CLL and throughout the, uh, various treatment regimes that are available for patients with CLL, um, we've observed that complex carrier type is associated with shorter progression-free survival and in some studies also uh, shorter overall survival. Um, we know that um, chemoimmunotherapy um, performs particularly poorly in patients with complex carrier type, but recently also retrospective analyses um, on uh, novel treatments like abrutinib and even venetoclax monotherapy have shown um, poorer outcome in patients with complex carrier type. So currently there is no standard of care for patients with complex carrier type. In contrast, for instance, to patients with deletion 17P, where it has been established based on the, the outcome of these patients uh, when treated with chemoimmunotherapy like FCR, that patients with deletion 17P should be treated with uh, ibrutinib frontline. And for complex carrier type, this hasn't been shown yet, um, basically due to just lack of data that we have. Um, so we don't really have an ideal treatment uh, uh, suggestion or um, uh, advice for these patients um, uh, and, and that's actually the, base, the current limitation that we have for these patients. So for CLL14, which is a randomized um, phase 3 trial comparing venetoclax ubunutuzumab and prolembosil ubunutuzumab in patients with previously untreated CLL and uh, coexisting conditions, we um, uh, tested all patients when they entered the study for complex karyotype. So we had a pro of approximately 90% of all patients um, uh, complete karyotype analysis available at the start of therapy and so we were able to prospectively evaluate how patients with or without complex karyotype perform. And the main finding here was that, as expected, patients who were treated in the chemoimmunotherapy arm had a significantly shorter PFS and, interestingly, also shorter overall survival when treated with uh, chemoimmunotherapy. Uh, and in contrast to that, patients when uh, treated with venetoclax or venetuzumab had a shorter, had a similar PFS and a similar overall survival, irrespective of the presence of complex karyotype, indicating that venetoclax or venetuzumab is um, similarly effective in patients with and without complex karyotype. So in CLL14, we compared venetoclax ubunutuzumab and corambosil ubunutuzumab in previously untreated patients um, uh, with coexisting conditions. And uh, the major finding here was, first of all, that the PFS, which was the primary endpoint of the trial, was significantly longer uh, in patients treated with venetoclax than in patients treated with corambosil ubunutuzumab. And uh, moreover, we also observed much deeper remissions in patients with, with, um, with treated with venetoclax omnituzumab, so an MRD uh, negativity rate, which is a, um, a surrogate for the depth of response um, of these patients, of um, approximately 76% in patients treated with venetoclax omnituzumab, uh, and um, indicating that we can achieve um, in elderly unfit patients deep remissions when we start with venetoclax omnituzumab. So in CLL14, we recruited patients with coexisting conditions and previously untreated CLL, which means that fit patients who are traditionally um, have been treated with more intensive frontline chemoimmunotherapy like FCR, um, based on the results of, the cyto of their cytogenetic analyses. Um, but in, in this trial, we just included unfit patients to compare it with the, one of the current standard of cares uh, for unfit patients, Prambucilogenutuzumab. So we don't have data on patients uh, uh, on, on fit patients treated with venetoclax omnituzumab yet. However, we do see that unfit patients seem to particularly benefit from this chemotherapy-free combination, which is fixed duration over 12 cycles, meaning over one year, and 
patients come off treatment and still continue to be in remission at the moment. Um, uh, and so that this, these are the ideal candidates at the moment based on these data. But there are lots of clinical trials going on at the moment, um, testing venetoclax or venetuzumab also in the frontline setting in fit patients um, and thereby probably broadening the indication for, um, for more patients uh, with previously untreated CLL. There are no strict contraindications yet for venetoclax or venetuzumab. So in contrast to other available regimens, we haven't seen, for instance, um, uh, an increase in bleeding events or cardiac arrhythmias, like for instance with some BTK inhibitors. However, we, uh, we did not include patients with um, advanced stage renal failure based on a cutoff of 30 milliliters per minute of creatinine clearance. So we don't have any data for patients with, with this end stage or advanced stage uh, renal failure, but this is not an absolute contraindication. So the physician uh, needs to evaluate is the renal failure, for instance, associated with the CLL, which would mean that we should treat the CLL to improve it, um, or whether there is an increased list risk of tumor lysis in the patient because of high tumor burden, then uh, a good renal function is, is very crucial and that's why um, one should be cautious with patients with, with um, advanced um, uh, renal failure with a creatinine clearance less than 30, but above that it seems to be safe and, and, and efficient.